Does productive farming have to compete with staying in harmony with the environment and wildlife? Well, here in Northern California, where rice fields stretch for miles, the answer is no. Changes in farming practices instituted by the farmers here have created a wildlife habitat that is literally for the birds. We've seen um, the red-winged blackbird, tri-colored blackbird, and we've seen night-crowned herrings, and we've seen a uh, snowy egret. So much variety of stuff out here. Birding is a family affair for the Sterlings. Natalia and her father are part of a group from California's Central Valley Bird Club. It's really nice going out birding with him because I'm so busy, like with school and homework and activities and whatnot. Right now, they're, it's a really good habitat for a lot of uh, uh, ibis and, and egrets and herons um, and ducks, for not, not only for nesting, but also for, for foraging. These beautiful birds aren't in a wildlife refuge today. They're flying around rice farmer Mike DeWitt's farm near Sacramento. He's invited the bird club for a special opportunity to see the birds. California is the nation's second largest rice growing state. You'll find rice grown here used in sushi, exported overseas, and even used in the alcoholic beverage sake. 2,500 California farmers grow rice, mostly in the Sacramento Valley. And those rice fields sit in the Pacific Flyway, where birds fly south each winter. Ever since I was three, four years old, driving around with my dad, he'd point out the birds and I'd say, what's that, Mike? And I'd identify the bird. So it's, it's just been a part of my life for 40 years now. And how these rice fields are farmed has a big impact on the birds that use this area as a habitat. For decades, the leftover stubble in the fields was burned after harvest. In the 70s and 80s, yes, every, every chance we got, we would burn the fields. The, the, the purpose of, benef of that is to remove the straw residue left behind by the harvesters and also for disease control. But to curb air pollution caused by the massive burns, legislation was passed restricting burning in the 1990s. Since then, farmers have turned to flooding their fields with water after harvest to break down the residue. In the winter time with the winter flooding, incredible amounts of waterfowl. Uh, this particular field right here, on any given January day, there may be four or 500 ducks sitting here. And what those ducks are doing is they're wading in that water, eating the leftover seeds, weed seeds, and more or less mixing the straw and the mud together, which aids in the decomposition. And it's a win-win. We provide food and habitat for the birds, and they're doing a job for us. And it's not just birds. Just under the rice plants, Mike finds a crawdad. He's got a good grip on the rice here. He doesn't want to be picked up, that's for sure. But we'll get these in the fields by the thousands. And what happens is this time of year, as we drain the water, these critters, they'll head for the, uh, for the deeper water and burrow down and spend the winter under about, oh, they'll, I've seen them burrow down four feet at times. And this right here is just food for some heron. Nearly 38 million people live in California, and with cities stretching out into rural areas, rice farmers have another reason to be mindful of the ecology. What it is, is it's another way of communicating with the public. We've provided this habitat. There's so many birds used, 365 days out of the year. And the more we can get people out, the more we can get our message out to show people that rice is an environmentally friendly crop. If we did not have rice farming right now, well, the only water that would be left in the, in the Central Valley for birds would be restricted to sewage ponds, industrial wastewater ponds, and a few wildlife refuges that have water. Not all wildlife refuges and state wildlife areas in the valley have water in the summer because it's very expensive, it's very difficult to get. So there's only, only very limited habitat. So with, with rice at this time of year, we have all this wetland, which wouldn't be here without rice. 
Of course, rice farms are private property, so venturing out to look for birds without permission isn't recommended. But for the lucky birders who get an invitation to go birding on Mike DeWitt's rice farm, it's an opportunity not to be missed.